Hello YouTube, this is Charlie 426 and today we have a, a different kind of review. Now this is still a model kit, but this is the 1 to 60 scale M9 Gernsback Commander type from Full Metal Panic made by Bandai. Now Bandai has been recently um, well sort of recently has been making or trying to make some Full Metal Panic kits. Uh, before then we only had like figurines of stuff related to that, but we recently got in a good number Technically three, and I believe another one's coming out soon from Bandai. Um, and a lot of people were telling me that I have to try these kits, so I decided to give it a shot. So here it is. Um, now, uh, for the record, uh, I recently only finished watching the Full Metal Panic series, and uh, so there might be some stuff that I might be missing, or regarding information regarding the the arm slave. So keep that in mind. Alright, so let's get on to the review now. This is the commander type, so I got the, I got, this is the version where uh, Melissa Bao, I think, uh, uses. And so this one does not have a certain weapon. But anyway, let's get on to the review. So I'm just going to put this stand away now and put the kit on the back. Now this is still a model kit and this is the 1 to 60 scale because I believe arm slaves are kind of in a different size when, when we compare it to Gundam or Gunpla. Okay, now before we start, let's start, start with the components. First of all, this is what you're supposed to get. We get a good amount of stuff. Now, I'm, uh, I think I should check the names of these weapons each and all, but first of all, we got this gigantic weapon, which this one only comes with the commander type. Uh, I believe this one is called the Grass Malincher or something like that. Um, yeah, it's good, but the only thing that I kind of find odd is the back technical te tactical stock here, because usually a tactical stock would be, I don't know, maybe like this, and then, no, this piece is actually a separate piece, so it's your choice to where to put it left and right, but I find it, kind of find that odd, so that's there. And this gigantic machine gun, uh, or assault rifle, can be separate into another piece. You, you pop this part out, and then you have take that out and you get this other machine gun that looks more of a sub-machine gun. Just wanted to let you know that uh, that thing is an option as well. But I'm just going to show you guys this long, large one as well because in the manual it kind of seems like they're trying to tell you to use this in this way. Um, stickers. We get a few stickers but I only used one. Mostly the, the eyes slash visor. Yes. So, I will point out what part was supposed to be a sticker. The, another reason why I did not use any of these is because they kind of looked out of place. Or at least color-wise. So that's that. Uh, we have another grappling wire which you can connect to the arm, which I'm not a big fan of these kind of wire action stuff. You get four hands in total, two multi-purpose hands, and two open hands for left and right, which a lot of kids don't give that much, too much as you think when you think about it in terms of Gunpla. Uh, we have this part which is much more of a cover piece for a certain area, and no, not the crotch part. Uh, we get three more weapons, Another, this is like another submachine gun sort of thing, which is a 40mm rifle according to the manual. Now I'm not sure if this is the same exact rifle where the Savage crossbow used in the, like, at the, you know, when it was flying the M9 thing, but it kind of looks like it, but I could be wrong. So yeah, this is just as like a, you snap two pieces together and then, you know, connect the end tip there so this is like another this is like an extra machine gun when I guess they use when they're out of their main weapon now we get two knives mostly I bought the commander type for this reason because it comes with two knives and I, I kind of thought this was kind of cool um, I believe they're both called the mono like a what a mono molecular cutter so we have the small one which is pretty much a dagger and I believe in full metal panic everything that like that looks like a dagger or a hammer you can throw it and it, it will explode and I think they I've seen a scene where they threw this knife and it exploded. Uh, these don't these don't come in any stickers or color separation because the sword the knives itself is a single piece there's no like snap two pieces together gimmick. So yeah. You just need to slide them in and you're good to go. And they have these pegs which are meant for like storing purposes and um, now currently on the back of the kit I have I have uh, this clamp thing that's meant for the submachine gun but this you give you get another one for that if you want to put the knives or swords on the back this is like how you how you use it like this in this kind of sense so just letting you guys know that you have a good amount of options now every kit comes well a lot of kits come with that, uh, leftover parts and let's see what we got now number one um, you get it you get like two of the same plates so some 
complete pieces are like a repeat pieces. So there, these are like literally extra pieces that you won't be using at all. You have these two parts, uh, which I believe these are these all go into like the, to the body section as well. Like this one is obviously like the side section of the body. So yeah. And then we get some leftover polycaps. Yes, this thing doesn't use polycaps, despite how stiff it is. So once again, very typical polycaps. And then lastly, once again, this is also another repeat of the um, the pop plates. So uh, at least I'm really glad they give you give you leftover pieces for these parts because these parts are like one of those parts where if you break it, um, yeah, you're kind of screwed. But good to know that they actually give. Well, not this. I, I don't think these were meant to be like to be like extra spare parts, but yeah, they just happen to be like that. All right, now let's get on to the review. Now I'm just gonna do my usual. Um, now before that, those who aren't really familiar with the scale, uh, here is a typical HG kit, which is one to one forty four scale. Whoops, yeah, this is one issue I'm having, which I'll talk about later. And here is the one sixty scale. So you can see there's a, a there's a pretty big size difference when it comes to like scale and size. Uh, so you can tell like the Gundams are technically way more taller and larger. Okay, so. What's the articulation? Now this kit, uh, the build level wise, it's kind of like a really advanced high grade or like a, like a, it's kind of between a HG and an RG. So this thing does not come with those uh, pre-built inner frames sort of things. But um, despite that, the kit is stiff in many ways to the point where you might have trouble making it stand on its own properly. Like you, I'm having that issue. Okay, now the head. I love how the head looks. Uh, the only issue or gripe I had while building is that I wish that this could have been a actual clear green piece rather than a sticker. But oh well, I'm not going to ask too much. And one of the stickers I was supposed to use are those yellow stickers that are supposed to be in these Vulcan areas. You see this black triangle area. You're supposed to cover the uh, partial of it with those yellow triangle stickers. Which I found would to be like really odd. Because I don't know, having yellow in there kind of seemed out of place. So that's that. The head articulation, as you can see, a little bit back. It can go down that much, up that much, and then 360 is technically possible. Sorry about the camera issue. Uh, the fin does, doesn't move. Uh, well, kind of wiggles, but it's not supposed to move. And once again, the visor is a sticker. Now let's look at the main body. The main body was kind of an interesting build, and I... Um, because the way how you build it, usually in terms of gunpla, you have like a front piece and a back piece, and between those you put something in. This one, like, look at the articulation of the main body. You have this part which moves like this, which is very different from a typical Gundam gunpla you see. So that's another, that's one moving point. And the main shoulders are connected to a ball joint. The ball joint is on the shoulder, and you put, and there's a polycab inside, uh, like that. So in that sense. Uh, so the shoulder movement, you can go forward and backward, and you can also have more movement using these parts as well, which I really find it interesting. And you have these shield-ish parts on the shoulders. They're also connected to a ball joint, plastic-wise, so be careful not to twist too much. But as long as you can move them, um, you can go sideways like this. You can twist. You can go 360 if you want to do so. Just be careful not to twist the actual piece, and you're good to go. And let's see, the shoulder itself can move up like that, and the shoulder itself, the arm itself, can go more than 90 degrees if you want to do so. And since the arm is on the ball joint, a 360 twist on the arm is possible. A 360 twist on, the, on this part is possible, and then you have a double jointed bend. Very nice as well, and typical hand, ball jointed hands, yeah, nothing too special on that. Uh, the... All right, now let's look at the main. Uh, we saw the shoulders. Let's look at the body. The body, uh, there's two ball joint connections. There's one on the main bottom and top. So there's like this middle piece right over here, and uh, yeah, and then we have a ab crunch, a very good ab crunch. I haven't seen in a while, like that. Okay, and of course, like for me or to some people, this this middle connection kind of may look awkward, but that's how it is. Uh, for the legs, they're pretty good as well. Um, there's since there's no front skirt, back skirt. Well, technically there is a back skirt, but yeah, um, there's no front skirt and side skirt. Uh, the legs are very free to move. It can go more than 90 degrees uh, to the side. Also, almost 90 degrees, mostly because of this part right over here that's uh, kind of colliding with the main waist section. And then you have a double jointed bend. 
and a nice good size swivel going on. Uh, for the feet, I would like to mention this is not a ball jointed feet, so I really suggest you be careful with this part because this is like a, a two peg connection system where the leg or the feet can move uh, left and right like that, and then can go forward and back, can go forward and backward only a little bit like that. So that's the best or most movement you'll get out of. So be careful when you're posing. Don't like force like the feet, or you're gonna break something. And also, I forgot to mention that you can move if you want to, or you could sort of work your way around to move the body all the way around. But once again, you're colliding with this part, so you're gonna have to work your way through, sort of. Also, another sticker that I was supposed to use was one was supposed to go onto this crotch piece, which you're supposed to put like a sand brown uh, color, which once again kind of seemed off place. And another sticker that goes onto the back of these legs, this part, uh, which also seemed out of place. So what you can, so this like for me was more of a personal preference regarding stickers. Okay, now we've seen most of the articulation, and once again, that's you're seeing me having trouble. Uh, Balancing the kit. Okay, now let's look at the equipment. First of all, I want to get rid of the annoying one that I don't like is this wire action. You have this part. The, this part doesn't actually move. Where what you're supposed to do is that you're supposed to clip uh, something off from the arm. Uh, let's hope I can do this properly. So I'm not sure how often they use this in the series. I don't. I can. I don't really remember them using this properly. But uh, yeah. Okay, why isn't this not working? Yeah, sorry about this. This is the part where I tend to struggle a lot. Okay, you know what? I'm getting the knife out. Ugh. So, what you're supposed to do is that... Come on. Yeah, you're supposed to take this part off. And then... Once again, I, I would like to mention that like, every piece on this is very stiff. When I was building this kit... Uh, building these parts were really pain painful because they would not snap in. They would I I literally had to like go tight badly. So what you're supposed to do is just you just plug the end tip here inside the arm and then recover like cover it up once again uh, with this and it kind of gives you the illusion sort of way. Well, some basically like this. This is the bait. Uh, base how, how you're supposed to do it, but it basically gives you like the idea like it's opened up and reveals a wire action sort of thing So once again, that's how it works So I guess this would be really nice for those who like to do like dioramas and stuff Okay uh, Now let's look at the smaller machine gun as I mentioned you can uh, Plug this machine gun right over here for like an extra weapon or if you don't want to have the gun there You can also use this to to put in the knives or if you don't want to have it at all you can plug this out and then as mentioned you can use this small piece to cover that part up if you want to do so so once again a lot of options and these holes I believe can be also served as like diff different purposes like if you have this all connected you can also connect like holes onto this so you can store the gun on the back if you want to do so or you can store in the knives if you want to do so like this so there's a lot of options you can do with this okay now let's look at how this thing holds the, the gun now uh, I'm just gonna take out one hand and very tight ball joint now these are the one of those hands that you have to do the annoying where you you plug it out and plug it back in sort of you know deal so once again um, yeah and then you hold it in now usually I didn't like that tactical stock thing so I, I took it out but once again once you have it on the hand you won't have any issues of course the gun this one may feel a little bit heavy to the point where the ball joint cannot hold it to on like on its own but you can see mine's a little bit wobbly that's because like I've used this a most like a few times so yeah and this the same uh, same goes for the the other gun this is one of those handles or you can just uh, you can cut this end tip and then plug it into the hand if you want to do so directly so once again you can do all sorts of stuff in your preferences so now finally I'm just gonna demonstrate with the large one because I'm pretty sure the other one does come with a small one I believe so uh, in the show I believe this was this was seen like this but also I'm not sure if it's the exact same sword but or knife it 
but it also was used like a chainsaw. There was like a chain going on here, so you can cut through. So Mao actually cut through the plane and took out the like their main objective, like bomb sort of thing. So yeah, uh, this hand. Yeah, I'm having trouble now. Okay, there we go. We have this hand now. Once again, this comes in pure black color. So if you're, but they, you have some engraved in detail. So if you want to color it, you're free to do so. And there you go. You have this. You have this knife slash sword on it. So um, you also you have these holes on the side. So you have the option to and these uh, hilt uh, sword holsters also have these pegs on it. So you can plug it in like that for each leg, like that. So once again, it's really your preference on what where to put what in there. So uh, I guess like you can also. Well, these ones have a different peg, so you can't plug it on here, but once again, uh, the kit provides a really good amount of options on how to store your weapons and how to use them. So, really, your preference. And I guess that's pretty much it for the review. Now, sorry for the sloppy uh, demonstration of some on, on some aspects, but once again, I would definitely recommend this to those Full Metal Panic. Uh, fans out there or those who are trying to get into bottle kits, but not with Gundam. I would definitely recommend this um, I'm definitely gonna consider on getting the Arbalest now, and I have actually pre-ordered the Savage kits made by Good Smile Company the crossbow and the green Russian one. I'm trying to get the rest of the two the, the Sam Brown color and the um, The great normal gray one so hopefully I can get those soon Anyways, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the M M9 Gernsback Commander type. Once again, uh, if you, if I got anything wrong or missed something, please let me know in the comments. And I still have more kits to buy and build and make reviews out of. So please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.